Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host Jason Turner. I'm available for code reviews, contracting, and on-site training. Now in this episode I am going to discuss a very old feature of C++ that you're possibly not aware of that's doing magic behind the scenes for you and uh, maybe make you a little bit aware of it. So let's just start very simple. I'm going to make a vector. And I have going to call this my vector here of integers called vec. Now I'm going to call a function called begin on this vec. That is all I am going to do. This is giving me the iterator to the beginning of the vector. Now, depending on your level of experience with C++, you might either say, I know exactly why that compiles, or I have no idea why that compiles, or perhaps mainly uh, you don't even know why this is even a question why this should compile. Now what it comes down to is the fact that this function begin does not exist in the global namespace. Everything in the C++ standard library is in a namespace, generally the std namespace. So somewhere in the std namespace there's a function called begin and we're able to call it magically without having to put this right here. These two things are effectively equivalent. Now generally speaking it is undefined behavior to add something to the std namespace yourself so this is just for illustrative purposes. But how is it possible that I'm able to call the function like this or like this? So let's go ahead and make our own types and see what happens. And really, none of this matters as far as what these things do or what they look like. So I'm going to go ahead and create an object of type S, and then I am going to use it. And again, you might care or not care, why does this even compile at all? So this feature called argument dependent lookup, or ADL, looks in the surrounding namespace for the types of parameters that are being utilized in this thing. So there's all kinds of handiness for this. This is one reason why we are able to do things like because this operator insertion overload right here exists in the std namespace and somehow it manages to find it for us. That's one reason why ADL exists and one way that it's helpful. But I perhaps can surprise you in some ways in calling functions that you maybe wouldn't otherwise expect it to be able to call. And we might be able to play with that a bit as well. Now this is confusingly named, but if you are using libraries that have similar types, similar names across them, and are properly in two different namespaces, you might not really appreciate that by doing that, this is now calling a different function. And you might also wonder, well, how hard will it search to find things from different namespaces? So let's try this. I'm saying explicitly that this function works with one from a different namespace. And now I'm getting this invalid initialization of reference of type void from expression of type, so this is ns to ns2. And we might have been left with the question of, is this ambiguous? Or how is it going to attempt to find this? So if some automatic conversion existed, which is would truly be a worst case scenario here, then it might be able to call a different function than we expected it to. So it is possible that at some point in your code, you might be utilizing ADL without realizing it, and you may find some unexpected behavior from the compiler. And I would say generally these are things that 
would be caught at compile time and it's not going to cause you some runtime issue, but it is perhaps a very rare case where you're not calling the function that you thought you were calling. But again, this feature does exist for real reasons and um, I know that there are people considering alternatives to it. So thanks for watching this episode of C++ Weekly. I hope you learned a little bit about ADL and maybe something about C++ that you did not know previously.